It is difficult to quote the number of infected persons or even fertilities at this time as the number keeps changing. Unfortunately, it is mostly exponentially increasing. COVID-19 is one proof that the world is one small global village, no matter the geographical distance apart. And from Wahoon in China to as far as Australia, over 300,000 persons have tested positive to the coronavirus. And in Africa, 47 out of 54 countries have recorded the cases. Nigeria, inclusive, curtailing the spread and accelerating recovery is now the focus of the world. Nigeria, of course, is in front of that. Well, that's our big story. You're welcome. I'm Ini John Mekwa. Vacant classroom, empty playground, stationary school buses. It's a contrast to what is the usual in many schools in Nigeria, but this is for the best. This is one of the measures to curb the spread of COVID-19, the deadly virus which is currently forcing countries to shut down social, economic and other sectors, leaving only the barest minimum. The education sector in Nigeria is one of those that have had to be shut down to protect the little ones. It's for all of us leaders to rise to the challenge. And I'm appealing that all of us collectively should rise to it. And that was why as governors of Northwest, when we met yesterday in Kaduna, we resolved to close public schools and make sure that um, uh, we, we, we take certain proactive measures, which of course include uh, coming up with uh, isolation centers uh, such as this one. So it's a collective responsibility, but I will appeal as well to the federal government to do more, and especially in terms of making people aware of the dangers that uh, the coronavirus uh, really, really, really portent. Although their teachers miss them, they say they prefer it this way. But they say the children should remember that this will be over and school would resume. But for now, they need to practice the preventive measures they've been taught. Before we even release the children on our part, we took some pre uh, precautionary measures just to help keep our children safe. You must have seen as you came in, the hand wash is here. We made sure everyone who came into the school compound uh, had a thorough hand wash. We made sanitizers available. We disinfected the environment, the classes, the special rooms more frequently than we did in the past. We created awareness. Uh, we told our children what the disease is all about and we taught them what to do to keep themselves safe, like avoiding hogs at this time of coronavirus, uh, social distancing, as all the children can tell you if you meet them, and uh, of course, um, going about with their personal sanitizers to sanitize themselves uh, as frequently as possible. We also taught them uh, to sneeze into tissue paper whenever they have the need to sneeze or to cough and then dispose properly and in the absence of a tissue paper we taught them to sneeze into the curve of their of their elbow just as a way of um, curtailing the spread of the virus. So now that they are home what message do you have for them? Keep your books beside you because by the grace of God we trust that we will put this behind us and come back to school once again to continue our studies. The unusual calmness can be seen in almost all public offices across the states of the Federation. Government, both at the state and the federal level, have asked civil servants to stay at home to avoid clusters which could easily accelerate the spread. First announced by the Lagos State Government, other states have followed the ban of gathering of persons more than 50 at a point in time. Civil servants should stay at home. If you look at it, in ministries, you have more than 100 people, 200 people in each ministry. That's a cluster. So what is, is, is done is to say, work from home, except those on essential duties, like um, officers from Ministry of Health, health workers, um, fire service, 
and um, top management that could at least keep the ministries going so that we don't have a total collapse. That is what he has directed and that is what we are complying with right now to forestall this um, spread of the deadly COVID-19. It's a sharp contrast on the roads, especially in Lagos State. In spite of the message of social distancing, which the World Health Organization puts at at least three meters, the Lagos State Ministry of Transportation has also reeled out some directives which should help keep the garages safe. They include that all transport operators and companies are expected to sanitize their parks and garages regularly and continuously. All transport operators and companies are expected to have at the entrance to their respective parks and garages washing hand equipment with soap and running water. All operators are expected to have alcohol-based sanitizers in their vehicles for the use of drivers, conductors and passengers. All operators are not allowed to overcrowd or overload their vehicles at this point in time. No standing in all BLT and LBSL bus operations and all buses should be at 60% capacity and not 100%. However, many have had to throw caution to the wind and strive for survival. For many, the issue is not that they do not believe in the existence and the dangers of discarding these precautions, but they have no choice. I'm just alighting from a bus now. Where I sat, I don't know if somebody that had contacted the virus sat down there and like I just came down and I started praying. I hope I have not contracted it. I have to go out but I have families I have to cater for. I'm going to enter BRT but I've, before I left the house I've already made a decision. I'm going to have a social distance for, for myself. I'm not going to enter a bus, a BRT that is going to carry standing. I'm going to uh, space myself where I'm going to sit down. I'm also going to preach it because I'm an activist. I'm also a social crusader. I'm also going to tell them that I don't need it right. Look at what we're going to do for us to be safe. Talking about social distancing, if I'll be very honest with you, it will be very difficult to achieve in this climb of ours. Reason being, right behind the camera or right behind me, you could see how many of us are walking on this pedestrian bridge. And you can calculate for yourself what are the distances in which we, you know, we have in between ourselves. Even at the stand of the government control buses, BRT, social distancing is yet to be seen. We need to also reach out to the operators of um, the BRT buses and all these other buses and all the corporate fleets, the peace mass transit and all the rest of them to ensure that these things are in place in their motor parks. And we're also synergizing with NURTW, Lagos State Chapter, with these service all their branches. Let us also have this thing in all the public parks that we have. For us in FRS is a two-pronged approach. Number one, um, measures to protect our staff first and foremost, then measures also to protect uh, our clients, which are the motoring public. And for us, um, every command, the command, the RS um, uh, Federal City Headquarters have issued directive um, what every field command must do to protect staff first and foremost, and which is um, we must um, have. Um, uh, provision for staff to wash hands regularly and also for uh, motoring public who may have been ticketed or issued a uh, citation and will come to pay or who come for our driver's license services and all other services that FRSC do render uh, to also wash their hand even before entering the premises to uh, have um, dealings with us. At the newspaper stand, many cannot resist the social banter that they have become used to. But at least the topic is still COVID-19. Well, what we're actually discussing was that um, it is an end time syndrome. Because uh, the Bible said it, that when one of the signs of the end time is that um, strange sickness will be happening. We have heard of um, AIDS. Ebola and now Corona. Maybe in the future, other ones will still come. But you came here now, and we didn't see any social. Uh, yeah, because I don't believe it will catch me like that. So life is about faith, generally. Yes, life is about faith. So me, I believe, it, it, according to my faith, life is according to faith. But not everybody believes in that. But I, that's what I believe, and so I walk by it. 
Another area with social distancing may be difficult to implement is the market. Many here earn daily living and shutting the market may have dire consequences for the economy and sustenance of the people. Well, about uh, 10 gates, we have locked uh, 7 out of those 10 gates. We have 3 that's open so that we can monitor those who are going in and those who are going out. And we've got the sanitizer. This sanitizer, I can tell you today, we have used over 50 sanitizer today, just today alone, from like 7 o'clock in the morning when people start coming in till now. And you can imagine how many we are going to, how many we are going to use for just today. We are even advised to lock more gates so that we can monitor more people that are coming to the market because it's a huge market that people come and then people cannot just stay at home without eating food. I'm, th I'm very sure that's what the government is putting into concentration. That was why the market is not locked because people are so jumper, they come in numbers for, for goods. But we are doing our own best, you know, just like when you go out and you see people that are coming in, they sanitize them, and we have people in the market that are also going around to see who is this, who is this, in case of any eventuality, we quickly take action. What we did on Thursday, on Thursday was usually our environmental day, and I called meeting for all sections in the market, including those women selling around, that whoever you find that is sick, quickly notify us. Tell us the person is sick, we have you know, some security officer here that will probably take him to the, you know, the hospital, nearby hospital here, so that they can text him and know what's wrong with him. And that has been ongoing. We have been doing that. Uh, up till now, we have not gotten any casualty, you know, that, you know, somebody is sick. And we tell them that if I, if I'm also feeling uh, whatever they told us about the coronavirus, um, in terms of having headache, coughing and all that, remain at home, don't come, don't come to the market. We have given them that order. So anybody that is sick, either headache or feverish, just remain at home. That's the order we give them. And people are complying. Okay, so you don't need people going around to check. Because some people might be like, I beg, I don't want my tomatoes. No, 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 we, we tell the neighbors. Everybody has neighbors. That once somebody with, that's beside you is having an issue, just let us know. He may not tell us. The person may not tell us. But I mean, when you're with somebody, you should not be able, you should be able to know how he does his thing on a daily basis. So inform us. Once you inform us, we take action on that. Since the schools are shut, children of some of the store owners have decided to get busy. With the permission of the management of the market, they formed themselves into one group and made their concern the education and enforcement of preventive measures in the market. We are assisting the market by um, sanitizing everybody coming into the market. Uh, we ensure every individual coming in and going out of the market is being sanitized by using the disinfectants um, issued to us by the chairman, by the market chairman. We have over like 30 people, some are graduates actually, while some are students, we came back from school, which I think they are more enlightened about the, the, the virus, uh, about the pandemic around going on, so we have to use them so that they can be able to orient people who are coming in and people are actually in the market as well. But like you can see, when you came in, you find some people outside sanitizing others. Why there are some also in the market giving it to dealers and um, sellers and um, even buyers as well. Over 90% of the cases recorded so far are individuals who return from countries which have recorded cases before Nigeria, which is the reason for the restriction of flights from 15 countries, even before the prohibition of international flights at the Port Harcourt, Kano and Enugu International Airports from the 21st of March, while Lagos and Abuja were added on Monday the 23rd of March. To further tighten the reins against importation of cases, the land borders have also been closed from the 24th of March. After a further review, Mr. President, on the recommendation of the Presidential Task Force, has approved the following additional measures. One, suspension of the weekly Federal Executive Council meetings until further notice. Two, postponement of the meeting of the Council of State which was scheduled to take place on Thursday, the 26th of March, 2020. Three, all land borders that have been hitherto under partial closure shall now be closed for human traffic 
for four weeks, effective the 23rd of March 2020. In order to protect federal, civil, and public servants, a circular will be issued by the head of service of the Federation and shall direct on actions to be taken immediately. This evening, the head of service would work on a circular which she will release that will give us an indication of how we would proceed in dealing with the federal civil service and the public officers in the engagement of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. All Abuja and Lagos residents are strongly advised to stay at home, avoid mass congregation of any kind, as well as non-essential outings until further notice or advice is given. The ban on gatherings of persons more than 50 has decongested social, religious and other gatherings. However, there are still individuals who have not fully complied, which has led to the Inspector General of Police ordering his officers in all states to ensure that the rule is not flouted. The Minister of Health, Dr. Sage Hanere, has been having a very tight schedule. Apart from working behind the scenes, he's had to keep the nation informed. First, it was daily briefing, but recently it's hard to predict how many times in a day he would have to speak to the people through the media. It's catching even more attention as broadcasts have had to indicate not just the date, but also the time. As of the, today, the 23rd of March 2020, 36 cases have been confirmed in Nigeria. Two have been discharged after successful treatment and one death has been recorded from COVID-19 in Nigeria. Of the presently 33 active cases, 32 are clinically stable with mild symptoms only and one patient is dependent on oxygen. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control is working closely with state governments of all affected states in Nigeria to carry out intensive contact tracing. Through intensified contact tracing, we have been able to promptly detect many cases. I strongly urge all health facilities to be on high, high alert uh, from the state local government, law enforcement authorities, and community leaders, and private hospitals to fully cooperate and to be able to inform the NCDC through the dedicated number of any case of someone who has fallen ill and has recently been out of the country in the last 14 days or has been a close contact of someone who has been out of the country. Another approach has been the formation of task force by various state government and the federal government to focus on the issues and consequences of the virus outbreak as well as deepen enlightenment. The goal of the task force is to provide overall leadership on the state's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, and thereby giving protection or minimizing the effects, God forbid, if it becomes necessary, and the impact of the disease on the population. Specifically, the committee would, among other things, be responsible for the following. One, assessing the situation in the state in terms of the risk of the outbreak happening and designing a response plan to prevent, contain, and mitigate the consequences of such outbreak. Two, to identify a suitable isolation center or centers for the management of moderate to severe form of COVID-19 and equip such center or centers with required equipment, including ventilators. Three, to ensure the availability of necessary consumables and other medical supplies critical for the management of the COVID-19 outbreak in the state, God forbid. Four, to identify and recommend to the government a laboratory facility in the state for upgrading to COVID-19 compatible public laboratory for testing of suspected cases. 
to coordinate multiple sectoral and multi stakeholder response to the co co containment of the pandemic. While preventing the spread, handling the already affected persons is also important. Personnel, facilities and medical supplies are areas of concern at this time. The hospital has trained over 400 members of staff on infectious disease prevention uh, by the committee that we've talked about. And of course, we've also made sure that our holding bay, which is our isolation center that is made of four beds, uh, which was built during the Ebola period, is also up and running. Uh, we have our staff there trained and retrained. Uh, in terms of collaboration, we have collaborations with a number of uh, organizations and government. We have collaboration with the Ohio State Ministry of Health. In fact, they just recently gave us 102 uh, PPE, uh, personal protective uh, equipment, which those who take care of patients with infectious diseases, either Lassa fever, Ebola or coronavirus infections where. Isolation centers have had to be created by state government, the most populated being the Vexious Diseases Hospital in Yaba, Lagos. But even before overwhelming cases, some states have created theirs as preparatory steps. So create uh, a, a place where uh, patients would have the opportunity to interact with, the, uh, with their relations without having to uh, be able to pass the infections to the, patient, uh, to the, to the relations. They had to make a lot of modifications. Uh, and that is exactly what has been uh, put in place now. It's not just these two uh, small structures. There are also major attachments at the back, and they have taken us through. Because you also have to, ought to have an incinerator right here where the guns can immediately be, the guns being used by medical staff can immediately be incinerated. Immediately, they are taking off uh, the, the, the medical staff who are attending to them. It's now commonplace to see the use of sanitizers, even by VIPs. Washing of hands have not been this popular, and the media is awash with information on how to store the spread of coronavirus. The current outbreak, COVID-19, is a new strain that has not been previously identified in humans. The incubation period for COVID-19 is between 1 to 14 days, most commonly around 5 days. Common signs of infection are cough, respiratory symptoms, fever, shortness of breath and breathing difficulties. In more severe cases, infection can cause pneumonia, severe acute respiratory syndrome, kidney failure and even death. Here are some basic protective measures against COVID-19. Frequently wash your hands with soap and water for up to 20 seconds. In the absence of soap and water, thoroughly clean your hands with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Maintain social distancing at least one meter or three feet distance between yourself and anyone who is coughing or sneezing. Practice respiratory hygiene. Cover your mouth and nose with your bent elbow or tissue when you cough or sneeze. Then dispose of the used tissue immediately. Avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth. Greet people with a wave, a nod or a bow. If you do have a fever, cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical attention immediately. In case of an emergency, you can call the NCDC toll-free number 0800 970-00010 Lagos State Emergency Hotlines 08000 Corona 080-231-6945 and 080-528-17243 We pray for the multiplication of the success in China in other parts of the world in a very short time. Don't forget to please use sanitizers, wash your hands, and where you can, please stay at home and stay safe. That's our story. I'm Amy John McQuarrie.